Hello, good morning. Ooh, make sure the strap's out of the way. Good morning. It is morning as well. It's about 10 to 6 in the morning. Um, and I'm heading off on the first of my bird surveys of the week. Um, weather's looking a bit hopeful. I try not to do them if it's raining or high winds or fog. That seems to stop me quite a lot when you're driving out onto the marshes. But today's looking quite good for this morning, so we're going to set off. Right, okay, well we've pretty much arrived at our destination, um, which is near Capel Fleet on the Isle of Sheppey. Um, so I should tell you a bit about what I'm actually doing up at this time of the morning. Uh, it's not totally for the joy of it, although I have to say it is a lovely time in the morning and um, my alarm clock went off this morning uh, just after five. Um, that wasn't so much fun and I stumbled around the house all bleary eyed, not knowing what I'm doing. Um, but it is such a lovely time in the morning that most people miss and it is when the wildlife's around so that's why I've got to get up so early. So I run the North Kent Marshes Breeding Wader project um, and this is a project that is supported by the RSPB and Natural England um, and I work with a number of farmers across North Kent um, and all of these farmers receive something called breeding wader stewardship money. So the government gives out money to farmers to manage their land for the benefit of certain species um, and some of our wading birds are not really doing very well in this country because a lot of the marshland's been drained, um, the habitat isn't managed in the same way, a lot of um, wet grassland fields have gone over to arable, we've lost lots of insects in this country, lots of reasons. Um, so lots of our birds like lapwings and redshanks had real big plummets in numbers but North Kent is still one of the strongholds of these species. So I've been working with the farmers for five years now um, and um, I go out and do um, advise them on managing the land uh, for the benefit of certain wetland species and then at this time of year in the spring I go out and do surveys to see if that land management practically has make, made a difference, see if there's more birds on the land and particularly if there's more chicks surviving to be fledged. Um, so I've, the piece of land that we're going to look at today, which I'm not going to tell you where it is, well I've told you where it is, but I'm not going to tell you whose land it is, um, this is uh, the third time that I've been out to do a survey, the first two surveys I do are on foot, and then the third one is in a big truck. Um, and that's because we can get up a little bit higher in the big truck and hopefully, hopefully, see some chicks. One of the good things about getting up early and doing this work is you get to see lots of other lovely wildlife. Like this beautiful hare. He doesn't think I can see him. There he goes. Bye. This is her. So this is one of the birds that I'm looking for. A yellow wagtail. And these are birds um, that are insect eaters, like most wagtails. He's having a good old preen there. Um, and they like um, 
Well, they actually seem to like sort of fields, uh, sort of wet grassland fields near arable. So I'm always seeing them on the edge of like the wheat fields. So once I've seen one of the birds that I'm interested in, I um, make a note on the map. Um, so, and they're all in codes. These are uh, BTO, British Trust Rule and Topology codes. So, uh, CB, Corn Bunting, AV, Avocet, OC, Oyster Catcher, RK, Red Shank, and there he is, YW, Yellow Wagtail. So, if you excuse me, I'm having second breakfast. I find doing this work, second breakfast, and sometimes even third breakfast, is quite necessary. I convince myself because I'm doing so much exercise. And actually, in the um, first two surveys, I do do a lot of exercise. I walk miles. Walking around this site um, uh, has taken me up to six hours to do the survey. Um, and um, I'm usually exhausted by the end of it. I'm not quite sure if my excuse really holds up at this time of year because actually I'm just driving. And the most I do is clamber out the vehicle and open a gate every now and then. Um, so I'm not sure how I can justify the second breakfast, but uh, it's about half past seven now in the morning and, um, and the second breakfast is calling. Uh, today we have a peanut butter sandwich and some chocomocha. Hello, Mocha. really with um, finding lapwing chicks is basically just to park up somewhere where you've got a good view of a likely habitat and sit and wait. So finally we've found some of our target birds, lapwings. There they are. And I think these have got chicks because they're calling in a way as if they're calling to chicks. But as you can see, finding something about the size of a child's fist in the middle of this long grass, or rush in this case, it's not easy. It's, um, it's a bit later in the week now, I'm still out doing my surveys, but this is a, an evening survey which is a slightly more sociable hour on another person's land. Um, and frankly, at times like this, I think how I'm going to be lucky I am. <laughs> but I'm getting, I've seen, I've got a lapwing chick and a red shank chick at the moment, which makes me very happy. And I've got this beautiful avocet that I'm going to film for you now. Look at these beautiful elegant birds, gorgeous. Hmm. We're doing really well at some of these sites now. And this area that we're looking at here with the water and the mud around it, which is ideal, which is really what you want to be seeing at this time of year. Oh, uh, uh. my shaky hands. <laughs> Yeah, this was actually only created by the farmer a couple of years ago. Um, and you can see what a difference it's made. I watch birds like this forever. So beautiful. That's such a lovely light as well. Yeah. Sorry, I'd filmed them for a long time, but I appreciate them. So this is why it's always worth just sitting and waiting because look this little baby has just popped his head up and if I hadn't sat and waited I never would have known he was there. And he doesn't think I know he's there but he is. So this is a pretty, pretty 
well grown lapwing chick and you can tell it's a lapwing chick because he's got that really distinctive head shape now and a little bit of a crest coming ah, so that's good that's two on this scrape that's good start <laughs> Each one is very precious. Look, this little pumpkin makes me happy too. He makes me very happy. He is a red chank chick and he is actually the first red chank chick I found on my site. So these birds seem to really struggle. They need quite wet habitat and a bit more um, a bit more cover they seem to need. I've got one site with lots of rush and they seem to do well on that. Um, Oh, he's gone and hid. Gonna pop out the other side. There he is. Yeah, look at him, little darling. They're all hope for me. Hope for the future. This is my little babe. He's decided to pop out of the bush. Join his mate. Though he's not totally fledged yet. This makes me happy because five years ago, I think this site, like pretty much all my sites, didn't get any chicks. And really it is just down to the farmer building features like this. I mean he did get money and um, money from the Sittingbourne Relief Road went to build this feature um, but as you can see it's really helped these birds be able to find the insect food that they need in that wet mud um, yeah makes me very happy well, one of the things I'm trying to do um, certainly this autumn is a work with new farmers um, so we've got lots of potential new land to work on um, which probably at the moment isn't getting any success with uh, wading birds but um, hopefully you know if you get the right advice you build more wetland features like this and that land also could be successful for these birds um, and some really exciting new land that I'm hoping to work on and the other thing is um, we're looking to find some funding um, to help create more wetland features like this on other farmers land um, and that would make a real difference I think um, some of the sites I'm on uh, so one of the things is in the past they would have got a thing called capital grants from Natural England in order to build features like this but that money just isn't available now so we've got to look for other sources of funding um, but yeah this one this wetland scrape we're looking at now was only created a couple of years ago um, and you can see it's made a huge difference already so if we create more of this then more chicks more birds will come and use the sites, you know, and successfully breed. And we'll get some more beautiful, beautiful views like this. So I'm very excited, very excited about the future. And don't matter how much doom and gloom. And people telling me, you know, oh, there's no point, oh, the world's going, we're all going to be, I don't know, there's no point, we've all got to give up. Then I look at the positive changes that have been made on these land, this land in the last few years. <laughs> and how can I not feel positive when there was no chicks on this land five years ago and now there are? that I've paid a hand in that.